This video will cover the Year 8 Geometry Test Preview. I'll put some time tags below with some question numbers for anyone following along with the test preview. Otherwise, I'll put a description of the sorts of questions we're answering for everyone else. Here's two nice easy rules. Uh, they're called complementary and supplementary angles. So complementary angles are angles that add to give 90 degrees. So that's this angle plus this angle will give you a 90. But if you're looking at supplementary angles, they'll be on a straight line. So this angle plus this angle will give you 180 degrees. In Year 7, you learned about similar triangles, which are triangles that have got uh, similar proportions, uh, but they're not necessarily exactly the same. Congruent triangles are triangles that are exactly the same. And if we want to prove that they're the same, we need to use one of the four rules that are on the screen. If all three of the sides are the same, then this triangle's congruent. We call that side, 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 but to save us a bit of writing, we just write it as SSS. If two of the angles and one of the sides are the same, we have angle, angle, side, or AAS. If you've got two sides and an angle, we've got side, angle, side, or SAS for short. And a special one is if it's a right angle triangle, then the right angle, the hypotenuse, and the sides must be the same. Importantly, this one here is the hypotenuse. It is always the longer side or the one that's opposite the right angle, which is what this little square is down here. Something else that might be an important note here is that whenever we're identifying a side, like I've done here, you might notice that single dashes are the same, double dashes are the same, and triple dashes are the same. So they tell you that those sides are the same length, even if you don't have a number there. Okay. Similarly with the angles, you notice that in some of the angles I've put just a, a single line here that's curved. That one is the same as any other line that's a single curve, but the double ones are different. They're the same as one another. Okay, It's just like the lines. So whichever combination we use, that means the same. It's important as well that lines are dashes and that angles are these curves. In question one, I'm being asked to estimate or have a reasonable guess at what the angles might be in these questions. So this is a bit of a revision from year seven for us. So this angle here, I can see that it's less than 90 degrees. So I'm going to have a bit of, and, and it's, it's a bit over halfway towards 90. So 90 degrees, remember, is a right angle triangle. So I'm going to guess that this one is around about 70 degrees. But really, any answer that is around about that, so 65 through to 75, is going to be correct. We know that it's between 0 and 90. Over in question B here, I can see that if it had been an angle all the way through, it would have been a straight line, so 180 degrees. Uh, it's definitely more than 90 degrees because that would go through here. So it's going to be maybe somewhere around about the 170 degree mark. Again, it's only an estimation, so if you choose somewhere between 155, 175 degrees, that answer would be right. Question 2A is complementary angles. These two angles, here and here, are going to add up to give me 90 degrees. What I could do is I could quickly just say, well, 90 minus 41 is going to give me 49 degrees, so V is 49 degrees. But that won't really help me when I get into some of the harder questions, so I'm going to use algebra to solve this one for you. So I know that 41 plus V is going to be 90 degrees. And what I might do is then use the balance method to solve it. So I know that I want to take 41 off this side to eliminate it. Anything that I do to one side, I've got to do to the other. So all I'm left with is V, and V is 49 degrees, not forgetting our units. Question 2B uses supplementary angles. So again, with this one, what we could do is we could just say, well, 180 minus 127 is going to give me 53 degrees. Again, using algebra, which would be a great way to do this, I can say I know that 127 plus whatever K is is going to be 180 degrees. And so what I'm going to do is balance method it. 
I'll remove the 127 here. Anything I do to one side, I have to do to the other. All I have left is K, and all I have left is the answer, which is 53 degrees. Question 2C is a slightly more complicated version of a complementary angles question. So we know that all of these angles are going to add up to give me 100, uh, sorry, to give me 90 degrees. Uh, so what I'm going to do is use algebra. So I know that 16 plus R plus 27 is going to give me 90 degrees. In my next step, I'm going to collect my like terms. So I'll add the 16 and the 27 together. So I know that I've got an R left here on 43. Gives me 90 degrees. And then I'll use the balance method. Take 43 from both sides. And I'll be left with R and the answer, which is 47 degrees. Question 2D is a slightly more complicated supplementary angle question. So I know that this angle here plus this angle here will equal 180 degrees. So what I've got is I've got 5Ms and 77 will give me 180 degrees. All right. Balance method says I should pick on this that's standing out by itself first. So it's a plus 77, so I'm going to take 77. Anything I do to one side, I'm going to do to the other. All I'll have left on this side is 5Ms. All I'll have left on this side is 103. Then I'm going to remove the 5. If it's a multiply by 5, I'm going to divide by 5 because that will eliminate it. But anything that I do on one side, I must do to the other. So all I have left is M is 103 on 5 or 20.6 degrees. Both answers would be fine. In question 2E, we need to know that the internal sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. In other words, this angle plus this angle plus this angle will give us 180 degrees. And that's the rule for all triangles. So I know that 31 plus 2Vs will give me 180 degrees. And now we just switch over to algebra and we're going to use the balance method to solve this. So I'll remove 31. Anything I do to one side, I have to do to the other. All I've got left is two Vs. And all I've got left over here is 149. Now I have to remove the two. It says to multiply by two, so I'm going to divide. Anything I do to one side, I must do to the other. All I have left is V, and all I have left over here is 74 and a half. Not forgetting that they're degrees. Question 2F. This shape is a four-sided shape, which is a quadrilateral. And so I know that the internal sum of the angles will be 360 degrees, so this angle plus this angle plus this angle plus this angle will be 360. And so I'm going to write those down. So I know that 57 plus 122 plus 119 plus whatever M is, is going to give me 360 degrees. Now I'm just going to switch over and use the balance method. So I'll collect my like terms, so I know that I've got a little M here, so I'll just throw that in. And then if I add my numbers up, which are my like terms, that will be 298. And that will give me 360. And now if I take away 298, that will get rid of it on that side. But I must do the same to the other side. All I'll have left is M. All I'll have left is 62 degrees. Question 3a tells us that these two triangles are congruent. Uh, so what we need is we need a rule for why they're congruent. And if you remember back at the start, and if you haven't watched that video, I'll go through the rules. 
here are our rules over here. Now, something that I didn't talk about earlier was this cool squiggly line. That means congruent. Kind of looks like a whoopee eagle sign. Now, if I have a look at this, I can see that these two sides here, 11 and 11, are the same. See that this side's the same as this side. And I can see that this side here is the same as this side here. So I have three sides that are same. Now, if I come over and check my rules, I've got side, side, side. So the rule condition is side, side, side. So we can be a little bit lazy and we can just write it in as side, side, side. So just a triple S. If we skip over and have a look at this one over here, 3B, this one has got a side that's the same, an angle that's the same, and another side that's the same. Now, we can't tell whether this is a right angle triangle or not. And neither of these sides are likely to be the uh, hypotenuse anyway. So what we have is a side, an angle, and a side. Come back over and check your rules again. And I've got this one here, which is side, angle, side. And that matches our rule here. So we'll call this one side, angle, side. In question four, we've been given two congruent triangles. It tells us this in um, in the question. But what's interesting in this question is the way that they've described the triangles. Okay? As you can see up here, they've used the symbol triangle, that means triangle ABC. So what they've said is that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle PJ. Okay. And they use the letter order so that you know which sides and angles are the same. So these triangles are congruent, but they're also reflected. So that means that this side here of five centimeters, this side's also five centimeters. And that this side here, which is seven centimeters, this side is also seven centimeters. So they match one another. And the angles are the same as well. So this angle here, 128, is this one. And this angle here, 9 degrees, is the same as this one. And this should help us to answer these questions over on the left. So what's the length of AC? Well, that's this line here. So it's 5 centimetres. What is angle, that's what this little symbol here means, what's angle A? Oh, angle A is 128 degrees. Just be careful not to forget your units when you're answering this. And the last question is a bit of a trick question. It's asking you to find out what angle C is, this one here. Now we don't know what it is, so we'll have to work it out. We know that the angle sum of a triangle is 180 degrees, so just as an aside down the bottom, we'll do a little bit of maths. We'll call this one x because we don't know what it is. So x plus 9 plus 128. So these three angles here will add up to give us 180. Let's collect our like terms. We've got x and we've also got 137. And we add these two together. It gives us 180 degrees. Let's do some balance method. All we have left is x, all we have left is 43, so we know that the answer is 43 degrees. Question 5, we have to describe the two congruent triangles, they're joined together. So, um, if you haven't watched question 4, go back and watch that because it'll describe how we have to write or describe the triangles that we're talking about here. So if we're trying to prove that these are congruent and we're going to have to describe them, then we have to be careful to match up the letters, okay? So that means that R is the same as M, that means that P is the same as P, and that C is the same as C, so that's a little bit easier. So it's the order that we write these questions in that matters, okay? So what we've got is we've got triangle R, P, 
PC. So it's R P C and it's got the little congruence symbol there is congruent to triangle M P C. And it wants to know what the rule is. Now, it's a bit of a trick question because we can only see that it's got um, one matching side and one matching angle. And hopefully you've noticed that this side here must also be the same because it's joined, so it's the same length. It's the same line. So that means that we've got A, side, angle, side. Question six is getting us to draw a couple of triangles that are congruent to one another. Um, I've skipped ahead and just drawn the triangles because I didn't think that would be very interesting to watch. Now it's going to be interesting when we do this, we're going to have to make sure that we've labelled the triangles the same way. So it says that triangle RST, so let's just call this RST, is congruent to triangle Z. XC, ZXC, and I've made sure that my letters line up. That way we won't get ourselves confused. Now it says that angle R is the same as angle Z, and it tells us that angle T, this bit here, is the same as angle T. Now, I'm going to give those double dashes because they're probably going to be different sizes. The length of ZC, so that's this line over here, is going to be 12 centimetres. And that angle S is 55 degrees. So this one's 55 degrees. Um, now, it wants us to label each vertex. We've done that. That's the corners here. Okay, and it wants us to mark in the length given of 12 centimetres on both triangles. Okay, so if this side over here is 12 centimetres, then this one is also 12 centimetres. Okay, um, as well as any angles given. So we've got 55 degrees over here. That means that this one here is going to be 55 degrees as well. 